Greetings. Joining me now in this fantastic glass room of the Marriott's Boulevard Hotel here in Baku is none other than Magnus Carlsen, who has just defeated Pragnananda in the final and therefore is the winner of the 2023 FIDE World Cup. Magnus, congratulations uh, on, your, on this huge success. Five times classical world chess champion, four times world rapid chess champion, six times world blitz chess champion, number one federated since July 2011. You must be really very happy to achieve the only major trophy missing in your full cabinet room. Tell us about your sensations now. Yeah, uh, I'm obviously uh, happy uh, and uh, a bit relieved as well. Um, you know, this is this is <laughs> this is what I uh, this is what I came for, really. Um, the World Cup wasn't really a thing for me. Uh, before I busted out in 2017 at, at an early stage. Because uh, to be honest, in 2017, I played because uh, I thought um, it's an interesting, fun event, a new sort of experience that I hadn't had for a bit. But after, after I did so badly then, I thought, yeah, I cannot let that be my my record. Um, and so in 2021, I was pretty happy with uh, my performance, really um, was really good to win six out of seven rounds to get the bronze medal. But yeah, it was was still missing. And um, I knew coming here this time that uh, um, even if I'd have like a good event, nothing would um, satisfy me except uh, except the win so i'm really really happy i was there when you got knocked out by do that and you were devastated that was a, a, a i thought a really tough moment for you so you play the two matches uh, confidently you beat uh, pansulaya tari no tie breaks but the turning point could have been in the third round against youngster kemar was this the most difficult match of the tournament but before you before you answer i think someone has come to congratulate you in the interview? No, no I, we are, yeah, we are okay. okay. So, Peter President Arkady Volkovich, would you say that that was the turning point, not only because you saved a very delicate position, but also because you said in the interview it was sort of a, a signal, a, a aware sign, a, a focus. Would you say that was a turning point in, the, in your match here? Um, well, I'd like to hit on the point about the last World Cup first. So, it's true that Immediately as I was uh, knocked out by Duda, I was pretty distressed. The thing is, it didn't last, it didn't last very long. Um, it quickly turned into, well, I have another match to play and I'm anyway fairly happy with my, with my performance, um, like getting to the semifinal is good. And also then I had to endure some, some pretty difficult uh, tie breaks. Of course, um, the match against Keimer, that was, that was the key uh, point. Uh, it really was the only really difficult moment of, um, of the World Cup. And it, it's a little bit weird since it, it came, came so, so early and it just shows like, um, yeah, how like, um, <laughs> really how fragile your, um, your World Cup, Cup life, if you can call it that, is. Um, of course, there was a moment against Abbasov as well, but yeah, that was one moment and none of us really saw it. So, so that, was, that wasn't too bad. Um, I think the thing about the Kamer match is that I usually play quite a lot worse in these... Um, uh, must win situations. So I think that's one of the reasons, like obviously the first game, it was um, developing. Normally he was playing well, I was playing okay. There was nothing much in it until, you know, one, one moment when I just completely fell asleep and he converted really well. Uh, and yeah, that's, that should have been all it took to, to knock me out. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, I did feel, I did feel after that, yeah, I should not put myself in that position uh, again, but I thought like any time that I'm not in a must-win situation, just be patient, patient, and chances will, um, will occur. So then, apart from Abbasov, you defeated Ivanchuk, legend, you defeated Gukesh also without a tie break. And then just before the final against Fernanda, you catch a stomach bug, which is very unfortunate. Um, we were talking before, do you know what happened? Something you ate, something you drank? And how do you deal with these things? Because I'm, I'm sure that's not the first time you've had some physical problem in the middle of the tournament. No, I definitely had uh, problems before. Um, uh, you know, these things, uh, these things happen. Uh, like, Previously, uh, at tournaments, including in Azerbaijan, I've had, um, uh, I brought uh, a chef, um, not only to cook, but also to make sure that everything I eat is, is okay. Uh, and it, I think it came from a place that I'd ordered from um, a couple of times, because, I mean, to be honest, I got pretty sick of the hotel food quickly, so I... I discovered that you could uh, you could order food here as well so that's what I was uh, doing for a bit I was ordering from the same place a couple of times it was always fine and then suddenly like right after I, I ate I started to feel hmm. sort of to feel bloated and then it didn't really go away and I, I sort of recognized the sensation that yeah this is this is really this is really um, this is really bad how do I deal with it um, Probably not so, not in the best, not in the best way. What I should have done is I should have um, tried to get medical help immediately. Um, I was sort of thinking like I have, I have at least a day uh, off before the next next game. Let's try and rest up, see if it gets better. Let's you know try and relax for a bit, maybe eat like after a day or something. It didn't, obviously didn't work. Um, and then, yeah, fortunately after the first game against Prague, I got some, got some, some help. And after that, at least I, um, the problem sort of went away, uh, except from the fact that I was still, still um, exhausted, but yeah. I've been sort of brought up in, in a way that you, um, that uh, you don't call a doctor in, unless you have to, uh, partly because they're usually de dealing with more important, important thing. But yeah, I know that I should probably have so, consulted earlier, but it turned out okay. I mean, I wasn't in anywhere near top shape for... Um, for the final, but you know, the, um, I uh, I prevailed. That's the most important thing. So two draws against Prague in the classicals. Of course, you were just trying to more or less hang on, you know, get the draws, go to the tiebreak. And today you won the first game quite convincingly. Um, seemed you equalized, you changed queens, went to the ending. Not much happening, and then suddenly you win, and then a draw on the. Tell me about Prague. What, what, what is uh, your feeling, what you've seen here? Um, will he be a contender for the World Championship in the future, in your opinion? Um, yeah, um, let me speak about um, the match um, a little bit first. Um, obviously, the first, the first game of the classical portion was, uh, was, uh, was big. I, I mean, I, I thought... Um, that's when I was at sort of my lowest physically and, um, and I'd like, so that clearly would be the, the most difficult moment on, on, on paper. Uh, yeah, as I spoke about earlier, I just tried to, you know, be calm, try and solve my problems gradually, um, not do anything too, too crazy. Um, and uh, I did take some comfort in the fact that he'd played 
well, not only a very, very tough match against Fabi, where he had to really uh, use all his talent to draw both the classical games and then to hang on and win the tiebreak, as well as um, as an extremely tough match, um, both, I think, physically and uh, mentally against Arjun, where he only had one rest day after, whereas I, well, I did have... Uh, did have two like that was the advantage of winning a lot of matches in in um, classical that I did get the extra rest day here and and there I wouldn't say the first rapid game was anywhere near uh, convincing I think um, I um, was caught out a little bit in the opening, didn't really, I mean, to be honest, I didn't know the line at all. So I was trying to play common sense moves. Uh, and then I realized after I played the move queen d6 that after queen g3, I was pretty much busted. Um, because I'm always sort of relying on having knight h5 uh, and then for forcing his queen away and then going back with a, with a knight, inviting a repetition there. And uh, as soon as he went queen g3, I realized that the queen can go to g5. Like normally you've already played h6, so, so, so that's not a thing. And as long as I don't have knight h5, I'm in a lot of trouble. If I go knight g6, um, I'm risking that I just get mate it after he takes brings the knight to g5 goes with his uh, queen so this knight h5 idea was born out of desperation more than anything else i just didn't see what to do but i thought my position was extremely dubious uh and then yeah he went queen g5 g6 then he went knight f5 very quickly and i thought okay this is nerves <laughs> This is nerves, uh, you know, this is, um, he, yeah, he's probably a bit too, too excited here. And then I thought, okay, I'm back in the game. This, I'm fine. Um, um, and uh, yeah, after, after that, um, well, I got the exchange of queens. I thought after that I should be slightly better probably because of the pawn structure um, but in reality it wasn't so easy then he sort of started out playing me slightly I was really just really just holding on um, until he made this move g4 um, and then I thought again okay this is um, this is youth because it's not a bad move, but it does leave me with some long-term potential. Um, and again, I was thinking, hold on, hold on. Um, if you can just defend and he doesn't sort of start to pull the emergency break and play for a draw, you will get chances. So just hold on. And after that, yeah, it went like a dream. I was just defending. I was really happy with this maneuver, um, rookie six to f6, uh, then bringing the king around. And um, I think the lower the time gets, um, the importance or the strength of the knights increase and the bishops decrease a bit. Uh, and then it really went remarkably smoothly from there. He got short of time. He got rattled. All my moves were easy to make. Um, and um, yeah, that was um, the big moment. To answer your question um, about Prague, um, I can say like, if he, isn't, if he isn't the world championship contender in the future, then who is? So um, I think uh there are a number of young players who could 
who could uh, contend for the World Championship in the future. Um, Prague is certainly one of them. Gukesh is another. Um, to be honest, I was lucky that I had, I think, by far my best day of the tournament during the first game against against uh, Gukesh. Um, otherwise, I think that match would have been extremely tough. Then you have you have others like Abdul Satorov. He was knocked out early. He was also in my path. Yep. Um, possible um, last 16 opponent, which would have been extremely tough. But he's also like, even though he had a bad event here, he's also very tough and very strong um, from a mental point of view. And I think that's what you see with with um, Prague as well, that he's um, not only um, the calculation monster, uh, but he's also very, very tough mentally. Magnus, we were talking before the interview. Um, tell us about your team here if you have a team here, online, who helped you here, who supported you, how necessary it is to get that support at this type of long tournaments, uh, different to other ones, which are shorter. But you normally have a surrounding, you have a entourage, people come with you to the tournaments, but you were telling me that you came alone here this time. That's a big difference. Yeah. Um, first of all, I had very good help from um, from from Peter, um, he was uh, he was uh, he was working very well. Even sometimes I wasn't sure what to do, and I basically said, "Yeah, I don't know, don't know what I'm going to to play. Just you figure something out." And he and he was um, he was helping me really, really well, as he has, frankly, for the the last ten years, and even some years before that when we were working together. Obviously I had good emotional support from family, friends at home, like even though even at times when I was sort of expressing, even as I expressed to you that I didn't particularly like fancy being here. Um, they were um, they were they were helping me. Um, I've been like traveling solo quite a bit for rapid events for for a while now and i have i have felt that i i'm usually pretty uh well i have been comfortable with that recently managed managing to keep a good routine and um you know um good discipline as well so my thought was, yeah, let's let's try this out. It's been it's been it's been working well. Um, just uh, you know, to have as few uh, distractions as possible. Magnus, uh, you're a man of goals. Winning here is a clear testament to that. What uh, new goals are you setting for yourself? What tournaments are you planning to do in the future? But above all. What are the goals? You mentioned at one point you wanted to try and get to 3,900. Is that still a goal? You've just won the World Cup. What else do you want to do in the near future? Let's say the next two, three years. Yeah, I think 2,900 is, uh, uh, is something that I've put, put on hold. I don't think that at this point... Well, first of all, it's extremely unrealistic now that my my rating has uh, has dropped quite a bit um, but also I don't see myself uh, putting in the putting in the work to make it realistic um, in terms of goals I don't know um, try and have try and have some fun of course you give, give me something more specific yeah. chess wise we'll talk about the other things afterwards but chess wise I mean Win the Olympiad with Norway, would that be a goal you'd like to achieve? Will we be seeing you in Budapest in 2024, for example? Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed the, um, the Olympiad last time. And it was my impression that my teammates did as well. 
even though we had a like sort of historically poor performance, the team spirit was really good. So I can certainly, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and make promises, but I can certainly um, see myself playing the, the Olympiads uh, next year. In terms of winning it, that's really tough. But we have some, we have some kids um, coming up, like um, Elam, who uh, who's almost uh, a GM now and is certainly GM strength. Um, uh, Semen Mitusov as well, who came from Ukraine, and, yeah. and uh, Axel Bupale, who's um, uh, who's uh, who just became an IM. Uh, I don't know if he's 15 or turning 15 this year, but it's also quite good. So in a few years, you know, they might be in the national team. So that's something to to look forward to. Yeah, apart apart from that, um, I see myself being fairly selective with classical tournaments that I that I uh, that I play. Um, and um, Rapid and Blitz, I enjoy a lot, so I'll continue to, to play, I think, quite a bit of those events for, um, for sure. Uh, but yeah, this is really was sort of the last thing. <laughs> so to, to finish this, this uh, question, Magnus, I wanted to ask you this question several times during the tournament, but I refrain from doing so. But you're not leaving here without, <laughs> without answering. You've just won the first place in Ticket to the Candidates in 2024. You did say the other day on a stream that you had, everyone had to assume, is your word, that you were not going to play the Candidates. But when you said you weren't going to defend your title, no one believed you. But then your word was true. You kept your word. So you will also say that classical chess is boring and stressful. You said that to me in one of the interviews. Can you more or less confirm conclusively that we won't be seeing you fighting for the world championship again, especially now that you've achieved your ultimate goal. I mean, I cannot confirm that I will not be playing for the world championship in the future because I don't, I don't know that for sure. When it comes to the candidates, um, I, I, I can only I reiterate what I said. Under the current format, I don't see don't see any way and I'm not trying to to change the format uh, for this cycle either so um, yeah you should just everybody should just assume that um, that when I say things that I that I mean them yeah. um, and when I was speaking before the well, after after the 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 World Championship match in twenty twenty one uh, and other times before the candidates as well, it really was only it really was only that I was expressing that I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I would not play the World Championship match. But it was unlikely, and it would depend on on my opponent in the world championship match at least to um, to some extent. So I did feel that I was like consistently expressing exactly what my my thoughts my thoughts were. Um, so yeah, I mean, if people choose not to believe it because that's not how other people think. That's that's fair enough, but I don't think I should be uh, I should be blamed. And if I had to make a decision like earlier, then I was always saying that yeah, if I have to make a decision, then the decision is no. And if but if I can't wait, then I will will wait. As now for the candidates, yeah, I, I don't see as I as I said, I don't see any scenario in which. I played the candidates. It just doesn't doesn't motivate or or, or interest me. Um, so um, yeah, I, I mean that's 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 more or less um, more or less it. 
my last two questions first, my last chess question. Did you actually play the chess.com speed championship last night, eight games? Was there a sort of warm up for today or what happened there? Yeah, it was sort of to, to warm up a little bit and like test if my brain works. And I think the, the answer was sort of eh. Because I, I mean, I was winning some games, but I wasn't playing well. I could feel that, okay, I'm still um, not feeling so good. So I thought, like, yeah, I mean, let's play a few games and then, and then see how I feel. And the answer was, yeah. Seven and a half out of eight. Yeah, but you should really look beyond the score. Uh, my play wasn't very good. Like, not to take anything away from the others, but I think anyone who looks at that, those games will agree that they weren't particularly good. Okay, so let's wrap it up with the last question. Other hobbies interest? Um, you're playing poker now. You're playing World Series uh, Championships, some other ones in Norway. We've seen here you're sharpening up your golf game. Probably you have to tell me about this golf thing. Is it a bet with uh, Peter Hein Nielsen, your trainer, or is it some other thing? Um, you're occasionally streaming. What other things are interesting you these days? And specifically this golf thing and your poker your poker career, if we can say it like that? Uh, I don't think there is a poker career to talk about. I always liked playing poker. It, and I've actually played sort of less poker, I would say, the last uh, couple of years than I have before. It just so happens that the few times that I've played poker, it's been uh, on bigger stages. <laughs> So um, I don't think anything will, will change there. I don't have any ambi ambitions, but I do want to play from time to time. As with um, golf, um, that um, came about in London. Um, I had this... Uh, um, I had this uh, event with Puma, with Christian Pulisic, and uh, he was going to go out golfing after we had the event. Um, and uh, I was talking to my, my friend, uh, Magnus Barstad, who I'm, I've known for many years. Like, we both love, love football um, and basketball. Uh, and then we uh, we never really talked much about golf except that we're not going to play start to play golf for a bit but eventually eventually at some point we have to start playing golf because it's a natural sort of evolution as you as you mature <laughs> i think um and then we sort of agreed after that event like yeah now it's now it's time to start playing um, and it, it started when I was in Dubai for um, the um, the global the the global chess league. Uh, I mean, obviously Peter loves golf, um, and Espen Agdesen, who used to be my manager, he loves golf as well. So it hasn't been a shortage of people who were trying to get me to play golf. It's it was only now that I um, decided that. I uh, want to start to play. So I'm extremely new. I'm terrible, um, but I'm really into it. So I want to want to get um, get uh, better for um, for sure. Magnus, thanks a lot for the interview. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations again, and uh, hope to see you soon in the future.